here. Maybe. First pitch swinging, line drive, he's done it. John Means has no hit, the Mariners. They f***ing come! Brown fakes, dishes, Kyrie going for the 50 feet. Irving has 50! Pressure from the Steelers, Mayfield in trouble, he's going to be taken down. Who else but T.J. Watt? First downs on this drive, Heineke, Enzo, McLaurin, touchdown! Drives that ball center field, hit deep, going back near the wall. Wilkerson, maybe, nope, goodbye, home run. Get him out of there! Don't throw to him. I never seen anything like Put it. Put up four fingers. I've never seen anything I mean, like it. He is just tearing the Orioles apart. Jonathan Taylor, goodbye, touchdown, Indy, as he crossed the tape at the goal line, 78 yards. And here we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Sports Department Podcast. I'm Stephen Clark with Justin Balantovic and Jesse Norman. And us three fine gentlemen are here to break down the entire WrestleMania weekend. Well, not entire, but the main parts, the parts that matter, the talking parts. Um, yeah, talking subject parts, put it that way. We're going to talk about that stuff. Um, but before we get into any of that stuff, fellas, how are you doing tonight? I'm good, and I'm glad we're kind of going over the major things from this uh, weekend, because if we did literally... You know, a stand and deliver WrestleMania night one and two, and then a raw after section. This will be a two hour long podcast, and ain't nobody got time for that. So I'm glad we're not doing that. But I enjoyed pretty much all the shows for the most part. It was a fun weekend, very entertaining. Yeah. So I'm glad to touch on it. Oh, I agree. Very good show. Yeah, it, it was a nice, I liked it. We had a nice weekend full of wrestling. It never gets old. Uh, but before we break down, we have to get into the scoring. And it was something this weekend. Um, yeah. All right. Let, let's start with it. Um, NXT scoring. Jesse won that fully. Nah. Congrats. I want to recap. Five to two to zero. WrestleMania night. Went to zero. You. You. <laughs> yeah, that's the score as of Friday. Oh, oh the, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, and we get to Saturday now, WrestleMania night one. Justin had a perfect card. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Five to two wow. to two. How did that one happen? I don't know. <laughs> but it happened. It happened. <laughs> okay. Winning is one thing, but my dumbass getting a perfect card? Yep. How did I pull that off? You had Charlotte. Yeah, you had Bianca. Mm, you had the Miz and Logan Paul. You had Drew McIntyre. Oh my had the Usos. god! Yep. Bam! I'm good. wait. Did I only miss Charlotte? I don't care. Loser. And you didn't have technically a yes, but I also put the New Day match on that one, mm. but in that one too. Oh. But um, but yes, Charlotte was um, yeah, yeah, and yeah, we had the same ones. Wrong, wait, so did much. that one getting pushed save my card? Because I don't remember. No, because you got that one right too. So it wouldn't have mattered anyway. So okay. it, it, it didn't matter where I put it. It, okay. it, it didn't matter where I put okay. it. Um, Hot damn. Yeah, so five to two to two. And after night two, I won that one. Ugh. So that Ugh. is six to two to two as we stand right now. Justin has the extra point because of the perfect And that'll card. be the last point I probably get. For the longest time, Jesse had a perfect card too until that show. Wasn't my last win like – Sometime last year, I can like look la- back at like last year's last like last year's rumble probably. No, no, it's been a while. It was, it's been a while. Um, eh, we'll figure it out. No need to do no, it now. No, no, you're doing it. Wow. <laughs> it was a while. <laughs> it's in the other notebook. Holy crap, Justin, you stink! Oh, here it is. Um, Hell in a Cell, whenever that was. It was early Which last one? year, Hell in a Cell, too, remember? 2021 Hell in a Cell? Yeah, 2021. I'll, 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 I'll look while you guys chat. Um, Well, we're not going to chat. We're going to get June 20th, 2021. There you go. Remember it was early last year, <laughs> Hell in a Cell? Ten months. <laughs> wow. But you got two victories, technically, in one. So. Yeah. We all got a little now piece a of the pie. 20-month trout. <laughs> yeah. We all got a piece of the pie, which is nice, though. We all won one, not like one person winning at all, so that's cool. Um, 
but yeah, let's get into the show and we'll start with Friday, Saturday morning. Jesus Christ. No, it was Saturday morning afternoon, which was NXT stand and deliver. And uh, we're going to cut, uh, touch on a couple points there. Um, the first one being Raquel and Dakota won the NXT women's tag team titles, but as I just saw on NXT, they lost it. <laughs> they um, lost it back to top. I said Jackson. this. I said this. I said this would happen. Yeah, uh, the way they've booked these NXT belts doesn't make any sense because Raw belts you know, and NXT now jump all because over the place. Braun Breaker won it on Raw, which is just yeah. bizarre. Because I was texting Clark because I was watching it while I was at work. It just cheapens him winning the belt for them to do it literally two days later and on they didn't on, have anything to do on raw after mania that's what but that also, was that was kind oh, of the issue well i also texted clark to him like maybe they're testing out how the crowd would receive braun as well to see if they want to fully commit to putting him up but it just cheapens it him winning the belt on raw not nxt because it's like every show had their own belt at that point it's like why are they moving well i mean it? the other issue is um they probably have more viewers on raw than they do oh, absolutely NXT takeover at t- like 2 p.m. on a Saturday. Yeah, um, this is weird. I don't understand why they're going back and forth with this crap. It, it just makes no sense. Um, yeah, and, and the same thing, I'll go to the next point. The same thing with Dolph and Braun Breaker. I mean, Dolph, yeah, winning one to lose the title. Then. And then, yeah, and then Braun wins it back on Monday. And as we're recording this, he's cur- Braun's currently defending it against Gunther. So who knows how that's going to turn out if Gunther is going to take the title. I'll they make Braun the, a transitional a champion? What the hell are they doing? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, but lastly, just from Saturday afternoon, is what's next for Ciampa? I mean, is he? Bro. I don't know his contract status, but I mean, it, he remember. He, I remember him saying years ago he never wants to go to the main roster, even though he's making appearances here and there. Um, um, what's next do- for Big Baldy? If he doesn't leave WWE now that Edge is getting a faction, I would love to see him somehow end up in that. I think that hmm. would work out really. I wonder who came up with that idea? Cool. What? I'm just. Huh. Huh. Yeah. No, I'm just saying it's a great idea. I just wonder who came up with that idea. Who came up with it? Who's that? You know? D- isn't it group shit? I didn't read. It, it was a group chat that I said that you acknowledged. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, um, uh, no, that's besides the point. Um, yeah, that'd be great. He'd be awesome in that little. Other than that, I really just don't see anything that he would necessarily really want to do on the main roster per se. Yeah, I agree. I don't think he's. I think he maybe goes somewhere else. I don't see him going to the main roster and really doing anything with WWE. His guy was Triple H, and Triple H clearly doesn't have anything really to do with the product right now. Yeah, no, um, I, I agree with that too. Um, yeah, but NXT Santa Deliver wasn't bad. We're not going to give ratings or any of that crap. There's no time for that. Um, but yeah, I didn't think it was that bad. The show ladder match was fun. Um, yeah, any other points on uh, Saturday afternoon before we continue? Nah, I couldn't watch it. I was at work. So. Um, NXT 2.0 is cute and everything, and I think it's a better developmental project, but it's nowhere close to the matches we were getting years ago. I mean, like, think about how TakeOver New York, like, stole the TakeOver New Orleans, like the Mania weekends, we looked forward so much to the TakeOvers, and then this TakeOver was like, yeah, it was okay. You know, it was, it was fine. Just yeah, that. It, it was okay. It was, it was a good start for them on this new journey of 2.0. Um, all right, but let's backtrack a little and uh, let's just talk about the Hall of Fame a little bit. I mean, we don't really talk about the Hall of Fame, obviously, nothing to predict with that, but I'm um, taker speech. Ooh, oh, sorry, I thought we were talking about Steiner mooing. Oh, uh, he, <laughs> he mooed that dude is a nut. Um, but Taker's speech was great. Uh, it was like an hour, but I really like the TED Talk aspect of it, of him just kind of being able to walk around the ring and just kind of express himself and like how they had the different gear set up there. Obviously, he it was, you know, he was our childhood. You know, it's as simple as that. So to see him kind of talk about it all is like, oh, man, this is 
something you know that's very hard to describe uh but the fact that he left it when they were saying you still got it or one more match or whatever they were saying he said you never say never and then he walked away put on the hat and everything the jacket it's like okay he's definitely leaving it open because he never did actually have his final match officially in front of a final crowd because that was the boneyard match obviously you know you can go back and you can find what his last match in front of a crowd was but no one cares about that and i could see him maybe in a few years doing something similar to like what austin did Saudi Arabia, baby. You're not wrong. They cut the big checks. That money, that Saudi money. Um, but no, speech was good. I I enjoyed the speech. Went on forever, like you said, though, because the fact that they put they haven't they haven't been able to put it on YouTube because it's so long. Well, and it's also because, like we've said before, everything gets screwed up with the two night mania. They put it after uh, SmackDown. Which they didn't get to take her till eleven thirty. The thing ended at like tell at like twelve twenty five our time. Yeah, yeah. Which is insane. Yeah. Yeah, but that, that was cool. Um all right, ready to get into some mania crap? Yeah, night one. Night one. Um touching on the main points, like I said. If there's anything else you guys want to talk about, be my guest. Um, um the Corbin Drew match was just kind did of did he stupid. even start? <laughs> what? I didn't start. Oh. <laughs> so away, let Mark. me know if there's anything you want to talk about, but I'll start just with, ah, oh, yeah, Corbin. <laughs> yeah, Corbin start match. Talking about well, no, I was just getting the matches out of the way that... can't okay. stop talking about Baron Corbin. <laughs> and, and Madcap Moss, who won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal on SmackDown. Um, Indeed he cool. did. Yeah. Um, let's get to the big news of the weekend. And the whole wrestling universe was shooken up and shaken by... The debut, not the debut, the return home of Cody Rhodes to World Wrestling Entertainment. What a pop. I mean, I love the presentation that they gave him, literally identical to AEW. Um, He was over. He shed his stardust skin. And more importantly than anything, he got the win over a former WWE champion, if you ask me. You know what I was Um, thinking about with this and pondering? through it all like we all had the inklings and feeling that it's going to be cody you know with all the rumors and everything it's like it just makes sense because the day of when they were po- or the day before clark whenever you sent it the graphic it was clearly a cody Rhodes cut out of another photo it was similar like when no way home was coming out and it's like they gotta put them in the movie right like exactly. like exactly. mcguire and garfield they have to be there like it makes too much sense but it's also like maybe they're they're not at the same time and it's like until i actually see them pop up on my screen i'm not going to believe anything and then when he did finally came out it was just chills it's like oh shit this is really happening it's real it's real life exactly the first first, like person to jump shit back oh my god yeah who would have thought that it would be cody of all people to jump ship you would say maybe jericho comes back he had a great career and i really think he's gonna take the belt off of roman I really think that's because what would they have lured him back with? Because with his promo on Raw, it was all about winning. He also has a contract. He can go other places still. Yes, I think I, too. They're saying his, right. it's a yeah. very complex multi year contract, which means there's a lot of clauses and probably outs and creative control and all that stuff. So he's in control basically of the way he's probably presented, how he's portrayed, probably some of his promos as well. And winning the undisputed universal title, whatever you want to call it now, makes all the perfect sense in the world. And ending probably by the time he ends it, Roman Reigns' two-plus year oh. run with the belt. Because you got to assume he's holding it to at least SummerSlam if they take it off then, if not to the next Mania at that point. So he is set up for big, very big things in the WWE now. I think you just said it right there, SummerSlam. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's in um, a stadium again, at the stadium show. I, I don't know where. Um, but yeah, I think Cody takes it off. I, I don't want to see this Roman Roman pun not no pun intended rain and it's at Nissan uh, it's at Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee. Is it really? Yes. I would have never guessed that. Oh Johnny Knoxville's winning the yeah! belt. <laughs> yeah, that's a random um, stadium. Yeah, that's a cool venue though, because I mean it's different. That's yeah. why. No yeah. mania's been there. Like, it's not like Vegas, New York. Also, it's in July. There. It's not in August. That's weird. Early, early. So if it is, if he does take it off of Roman, there it would be. Ju- it would be a month under twenty three, uh, under twenty four months. 
It'd be twenty. I think minutes. we're. I, let's let's not let's not count all of our chickens before they hatch. Let's yeah. not just assume Cody has just taken the belt off Roman. I think we're. Um, I think they I still don't know if them. if Vince is just gonna give Cody that much that quickly. Um, say, he might, he, he, they might bring back the world heavyweight title too. You know, that's the thing. Uh, if, the <laughs> if Roman stays on SmackDown full time and they make a new belt and put it over on Raw, Cody's winning that one. Then Cody's winning. He'll be the first one to win that. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. Any other Cody thoughts? Uh, the match with Seth was fantastic. The, mat- the match was, I thought, top two match of the weekend. Um, match of the year candidate. Really, really good. In it, was my the per- opinion. it was the perfect person to pair him with, honestly. Because yeah, probably the my favorite Cody match. And also, like, that I can remember. Seth is getting into the Roman tier. It's like, can you name the last bad Seth Rollins match? Nope. You know, you know. It was like, well, and, and he always loses. And Rollins yeah. just was the eye for an eye match wasn't even bad, realistically. Just the concept. <laughs> it it the had concept. no business being as good as it was. The concept. The feud shouldn't have been nine months, but you know can't help that yeah no you cannot um you guys talked about match of the year candidates i thought the this next throws it to talk about is one of my oh, match of the years this is probably one of the greatest wrestling oh, my match of the weekend honestly yeah. and that's bianca belair and becky lynch because these two put on a show they showed right there why they should be the main event and you know granted austin owens was fun this match should have closed the show. It, it, it was that good. Um, Bianca wins the belt back, completing that storyline that started at Survive uh, at SummerSlam. Um, great. I thought this was great. I think it was the best match of the weekend. Honestly, it, yeah, I agree. Hands down, it was. It's, it's oh, it's up it's there. Easy, There's a lot, there were so many good matches, and it's though. easily the greatest women's WrestleMania match I think of all time too. Hundred percent. From a storytelling perspective, yeah. everything behind it to the match itself to the payoff, it was probably the most well built, well built and executed women's match of all time. Honestly. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I hundred percent agree. Yeah, WrestleMania match. Yeah, I think Charlotte Becky at Evolution. Oh, it's still tier. better build, better match, but this is the best WrestleMania women's match. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know what's next for either one. I can see Becky take finally taking some time off again. Um, Bianca's the champ on Raw. That's great. I mean, now we have to elevate some other women instead of running the same couple of women like Charlotte and whatever. So, yeah. It'd be, it'd be great for a Bailey return. Just to fill that void. Yeah, I forgot about her or Oscar, either or. Um, yeah, they need something. Yeah, and now let's get. They only care about Oscar when the horse women aren't there. That's yep. true. Well, one of them might be taking off. So, well, she might Oof. be taking some time off. Oh, Bailey. Uh, one Becky. stuck in the tag division. Yeah. So that is true. And one's on a different show. That is true. Um, let's get to the main event, baby. Kevin, oh, Mr. Main Event, Kevin Owens. Ugh, this is what a sham. A returning. I'm kidding stone cold to the ring after 19 years having a legit match like i i was like waiting for like you know austin got a lot of the offense in right away i'm like is austin actually going to take bumps and the answer was yes austin took plenty on on the floor and he took a, he took a stunner which was kind of crazy he, he um, took like a head to like a headshot to the uh the pole too they throw him like yeah, right into but, the um, ring no, post. this all start this all started as a he took a su- he took a suplex on the concrete on the yes. concrete on yeah. the concrete has a bad back a bad neck so and then he was giving yeah. suplex to Owens on the stage too which that's metal multiple <laughs> yeah yeah um, but now this started as the KO show how it was billed. and you know Stone Cold comes out in the jorts and he comes out in um, the knee braces and he's like oh wrist tape on he's ready for a fight. And then it turned into a fight. The crowd was, of course, very into it. Owens with the great heel work. Owens being the Texas baby face. And like we just said, it turned into a match. And Stone Cold won. And what? how did we feel about this closing the show? Um, I think, you know, obviously Austin coming back after 19 years is main event worthy in and of itself. The fact that it wasn't just a few punches and a little brawl in the ring – Austin hits a stunner one, two, three, we're done in, in and out in under three, four minutes. The fact that it went 14 minutes and it was a legitimate Austin match. Cause if we're being honest from when he would wrestle way back when, from what we've seen on like the network, 
how much different was this from his old ma- older matches? You know, not often. Like he still got. He his, didn't do a Luthez press. That's yeah, about it. But he got his typical <laughs> offense in, and it was a good match. Still, Kevin Owens deserves all the credit in the world. He built this feud up by himself, and literally had no interaction with Austin until basically day of. And even the package of itself made it look better than how they built it and by himself. Packages all weekend. Yeah, oh, the packages are always so the good. good. Package. <laughs> Indeed, I do. The W the WWE editors do not get paid enough. No, by far. Did you guys see the edit of the McMahon? Uh, the stutter, yeah. It stutter. made it. Oh it, my god! It made it look so much better than what it actually was. So Insane. funny. Insane. Um, no, I mean this this was a good enough main event. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Honestly, I all the matches that I was like really not looking forward to, probably besides like Corbin um McIntyre like really over delivered for me well, that's the that's what we were talking in the chat it's like all the matches even that match to an extent it was still a good match but there was different gauges of interest I had in each match and that's kind of how it built yeah. it for me like the matches of themselves were all good I obviously wasn't interested in that one I wasn't interested in the tag match even though it ended with Boogs getting hurt and they kind of scram- scrambled to the finish line for that one unfortunately but like other than those two matches I really couldn't care for but they still weren't bad matches. Like the show in it of itself mm. was a very good show. It's just what was my interest in each match. And they did a very yeah. good job in stacking the ones I don't care about early on in night yeah. one. Because after that, it was just a roller coaster. Rapid fire. After that, it was just yeah. banger after banger after banger. Um, yeah. I also thought it was funny. Austin definitely made them promote his beer. Oh, there was absolutely. like a shot of like oh, just yeah. the beer. Just the McMahon had to drink beer. it. And I had taste it. it. I, I got some for the weekend. It wasn't how horrible. was it? It wasn't bad. Justin's not my beer guy. No, no I'm not. not a, my father loved Dude, it. Dude, Steve Austin drank so many that weekend. He was. Yeah. Did you guys know the American oh, but, but Dude, be, Okay. How two much points. Is he- two points. Hold on, Justin. Hold on. Hold on. Two points. Two points. Steve Austin is so good at catching beers one-handed yes. while Insane. cradling other beers. Two, if he dropped a beer, he just said, screw it. I don't care. Give me, me another, another one. Give me another one. I brought, so, he he brought Austin like 48 over. beers. Uh-uh. <laughs> so how much? Like 48 so each beers. can, I know this because I bought it. I have it, right? It was 6% alcohol per can, and it was a pint per can. How much did he have that weekend? I think the real question he, is how much wet in his mouth and how much. That's the thing. Shirt. Well, yeah, because he dumps yes. all of it on top. Yeah, he probably he gets like all of it. He does, like he does a quick he, squish. He probably dumps like, like an eighth it. of it actually into his mouth. Yeah. But at that yeah. point, yeah. But still, they went through easily fifty plus cans, maybe about that. I'd say so. I would say so. The, the first night, I was like keeping count, and I think he went through about like a eighteen to a twenty four pack. That's insane. That's beast. That's a lot of money for those. It's a fifth, it's seventeen dollars after tax for four. Wow, I don't know if Steve <laughs> Austin can afford that, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's mainly night one. We're to jump into a mix of both night one and night two and just talk about the celebrities that came out and how good they all were in their own different ways. Um anyone want to start with one that stood out to them more and we'll um well they're all kind of, they're all kind of different right they are they're all very different well that's the thing say. but it's yeah. we've seen a the quality of celebrity matches get kicked up a little bit because they're getting celebrities who actually care about wrestling and who are fans so they'll at least yeah you know, that's the big part who were and who fans. are ath- and who are athletic you know for the most part yeah. who will actually train. Or just nut jobs like like logan or, Paul, yeah we'll just yeah yeah like Logan Paul is a legitimate boxer by this point, right? Like he's in shape. He's very athletic. He's built. He can, he, he fits, great. he fits the build, right? Johnny Knoxville is a career idiot, right? So he'll do all the stupid career stuff. Like, man. He's been taking bumps since he started jackass in the nineties at that point. Right. And Pat was a football player. You know, even though he was a punter, he was still a football player and in shape. And he had a match prior to this and it's, they were all fans of wrestling. You know, they built it in Pat's package that he wanted to be, have a match at WrestleMania. Mm. Logan Paul, same thing. He was a wrestling fan. Giant Oxlade, who the hell knows? But he just likes having fun at that point. Yeah. Uh, I loved all three of these matches in their own different ways. I loved the Logan one just because of how much he impressed me. I didn't expect him to go all out. Like he that. was up. He, he did more, honestly, a little bit than Bad Bunny. Like he took a lot more he up there. He was up there for sure. You can tell he, he's such a good heel and he sold he's everything so well. Heel. Well, he fits WWE yeah. perfectly. 
That's yeah, the thing. He's, he's like, oh, he's yeah. He's, he's like a, to do that, honestly. Like, he's very in the same vein of The Miz. You know? Yeah. Exactly. But even more, I think it's like a mix of, like, Miz, but he also has some, like, John Cena to him where, like, kids, like, and he's all, love him. He's also big, like, a wrestler, too. Like, he's, like, 6'3". Yeah. He's, oh, and yeah. He, and he moves smoothly, too. Like, not yeah, awkward, the, nothing. No. Oh, he, he was great. Um, well, his frog splash was great. Like yeah. he yeah. he got up um, and he did great things like to get he like to get the crowd to boo him. He did the three amigos on it was Ray I think right or is it Dominic? Yeah. I don't remember which one. Yeah, Ray. But, like he just did a great job, and now that we're probably gonna get Miz him at Backlash, it's I'm fine That'd with that. I, I don't mind that honestly. Yeah, Miz will be a good uh, foil for him to have. And working um, with Miz, Miz is probably the best bet because he doesn't hurt anybody. Yeah, that too. Um, since we spent this much time talking about Logan Paul. Man, that Johnny Knoxville Sami Zayn match was <laughs> oh, so good. So good. That so is the fun. funniest match I've ever seen. I think um, so too. I already have rewatched it. Um, it is oh, so good. The oh, gags it are is great. so funny. It, it, oh, the mouse dude, trap the hand, table just oh. the mouse trap, the hand, yeah, the wee the man Cole, body flag. I don't think Cole, Cole and Pat didn't get enough credit for how good they were on commentary for this match. Yeah. Oh my god! Well, it's yeah. like because wrestling is meant to be fun, right? And obviously, John Knox was not to go out fun. there and have a five star match. They embraced what he's. I good disagree. At. He had a five star match. No, but I'm saying like they embraced what he's good at is gags and jokes, and they put it and put it in wrestling and all the things and that they Sammy do. And would just start kicking him. Right? Sammy like, was the perfect yes. opponent for this. When he really Sammy was. could, he would just kick him in the face. And then Johnny would just <laughs> Dude, and he would, and he would, he would take those shots too. It's amazing. Dude, Wee Man got death drilled. In the face. <laughs> and the just fact that he was able Sammy to slam shit. Sammy without dropping him on his head from like the three inches. Dude, that, that was, was a good that, that was, I know. That was impressive. That was, that was a little dicey though. Yeah, and then yes. Pontius came out. Oh. Oh, his oh my god, dude! And Pat, Pat was so good with with with, boy with, with referencing there. the whole jacket. I want to say that's I want to say it's the first time I've seen Pontius's ass, but I would be wrong. That is so I'd true because right. if you watch any of the Jackass movies, you see it. Oh yeah, He's four to five different skits a movie. Uh, Jack's no He's way home. That thing on him. Um, no, that was fantastic. Um. And then the and giant mouse trap to pin him down. And then the Wait, giant mouse really? trap at the end. It's just like a cartoon. Uh, yeah, well, that's it. what it was. And it was great. I love the it. Fact that yeah, Knoxville... Sammy was the perfect person to have in and this And the match. fact that Knoxville also got busted open, too, with, yeah, like the, with the rec specs on is just even more funny. Uh, and last, <laughs> but certainly not least, oof, Pat McAfee, baby. Did it again. And I know Jesse talk, talked about Cole and McAfee on commentary there. Cole on commentary during this match. Was oh, totally like no. He, he sounded he legitimately so happy for him. He, Honestly. Dude, he was so good. He was so like Because, like, Michael Cole's one. been around forever. Like, he's a pro's pro when it comes to WWE commentary because he's been around forever, like 20-plus years, right? If he honestly just wanted to be a commentator unbiased, like he wouldn't have had the emotion that he had in this. Like that was real, honestly, I feel. Yeah, Pat coming out to Seven Nation Army, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders punting a ball into the crowd. A great entrance. Um, and Austin Theory, I mean, I give the kid credit too, just for like taking this match and taking the pin from Pat McAfee. Honestly, because he probably knows too, like Pat's it, done. It's well, his Pat time's said coming. Done. Pat said he's his done. time's coming too. But it's exactly. also, but it's also like, it's not a bad thing because he's in a celebrity match. If he makes him look good, he'll look good too. At the same time, it, it's a very good career move, also to at least give it your all for this one. No, it is, and um, I think the funnier thing happened at the end where McMahon, you know, gets all pissed at Theory, then takes off his shirt and jacket. What was the sh- this? This was like just a trip. It, it was a great fan service, like. In the weekend, trip, like honestly, whatever. I think this was this was the last time I think we'll ever see McMahon in the ring, and I think that's like I, I didn't what think they we were wanted see him to before give us. tonight. I thought we saw him no, I him never, before. I never yeah. thought we would see him again either. But I think this was like dude loves I, Pat. He loves. I think Pat. in a way, I think in a way too, there is kind of a different like view on your last time in the ring, especially with the whole Triple H thing now where we don't know if Triple H wanted to do another match, and then he kind of now can't he, because he of the... He to do something at this Mania. 
apparently. Yeah, so that was kind of taken away from him. So yeah. I think it's kind of a thing of like, I want to at least go out on my last match knowing it's maybe my last match. Yeah, probably. And, and he and, won um, on the way out. He, <laughs> and he yeah. won on the way out. Man beat McAfee, which was hilarious. An all decade punter. Oh, yeah. And With then um, Austin comes out again. You know, they help. They beat up Bob McMahon Vince. Vince there. freaking out when Austin Theory's music. That hit. was hilarious. You, he that got so jumpy because he funny. knew it was coming, but he he, he knew it was. He coming. got the wrong cue. He just reacted, but he the got the wrong time. cue. That's um, getting edited out in the replays. Yeah. Um. But no. That oh was yeah. Great. They'll just cut away from him. The stunner was hilarious. Um. I think Austin oh, Theory took the greatest stunner. Of he all cleared time. the top rope by like two feet. Yes, he Late, did. I think he the rope. Yeah. One of the, the ropes greatest. are like five. Besides the Scott Hall one, I love the Scott Hall one too, where he just stands there and he takes another stunner. He jumped I like a cartoon and was running in the air like this with his legs. And then, um, then he Stone Cold drinks the beer with Pat. Pat has the beer in his mouth, takes the stunner, spits out the beer as he drinking the beer on the it, floor. It, it, mu- it, it must have been like Pat's best like moment. dream. Jesse just said it, what he just said right there. But my favorite moment of the whole wrestling Pat, yeah, Pat, Pat knocked down the on the floor, the drinking the drinking. beer, the beer pouring out of his mouth for that's the brand. My- that's my favorite also, clip of the whole WrestleMania. How the hell did McMahon fuck up taking the stunner? He took how many in the 90s and at this point? Dude, Apparently, he's 77. I listened to Pat's show on Monday. Um, apparently, Stone Cold was kicking hard before those stunners. I <laughs> bet. So th- that well, he, set me well the kick, the kick threw Vince down. Yes. Like he back. wasn't ready for that kick to be that hard. <laughs> it was hilarious. It's awesome. It was just such a good fan service. Just funny. Moment. I think they have to lower our expectations a lot more, like they did to the Bill. Yes. And when they lower our expectations like this. It's awesome. It, well, it's that's a the great thing. Show. We talked about it prior to this in the preview where it's like the floor for this is, could be really, really bad, but the ceiling could be really high. And it and, was high. And none of the matches even came close to the floor. Mm-mm. No, this is one of the best manias that I can it's remember the best, of the it's last the best like one. 31. Of, yeah, yeah. I was going to say of at like, least the last like six, seven years. Like, honestly, if I were to ever rewatch this, I probably wouldn't skip any of the matches, not, honestly. Not too many. Maybe like the beginnings a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I would just there. probably forward through them just for interest purposes. But after um, that, I would keep everything on. Yeah. Um, all right, let's just do a couple more points so we can finish this up before the timer ends. We have seven minutes left. Cool. Um, Triple H retired. There's not much to say about that. I'm glad yep. he got his moment, left his yep. boots in the ring. He'll um, be in the Hall of Fame next year. He's the headliner. Okay. Yep, probably. He'll be the first yeah. three time. Yep. Evolution, DX, and then Evolution, uh, DX. Is Evolution not in yet? It'll Evolution be, isn't be a, in yet. He'll be a four timer then. D- he'll, he'll be, be the yeah, authority. DX, Evolution himself. The, the click if they wanted to. Yeah. Oh, maybe. maybe they'll do the, the, the click, click. The authority, imagine like seven times. Go through the authority. So, Put him in as a producer, <laughs> an executive. Um, he retired. I'm glad he got his moment. That, that yeah, made me happy. That was a good way to start the, the front show. row. Great. And it was kind of nice for him to do the welcome to WrestleMania, kind of like that. Maybe that's Vince kind of passing it on to him that he's soon going to be in charge of the company. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> he just took away NXT. Yeah. 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 But I'm just saying um, the welcome to WrestleMania was always Vince's thing. It is. Um, all right, before, yeah, I get get ready the, the two, the, before I get to the two biggest things of the night um, that happened, um, I would say um, just a couple of the title changes where Sasha and Naomi win in the tag titles, which is great. I like that. Can't team. wait for the women's tag title match again next year. Yeah. That's exactly. the next time it'll be defended. Um, yeah, on pay-per-view probably. Um, uh, RK Bro retained. Great. Keep them together. Um, Usos retained the night before with the Rich Holland injury. Um, nothing else crazy besides um, Edge, AJ, and Roman, right? Before yep. we no, carry on. Yeah, we're good. Yep. Um, all right. So the Edge AJ match was a little disappointing, if I do say so myself. Um, but it's obviously building towards something else. Uh, it did it, when it started picking up. I felt like it ended, but what are you gonna do? Um, but no, but the it main was story, slow moving. It was. Yep. It was. But the main story out of this was Edge has a new faction or a new partner for now, and that's Damian Priest. So what the hell's going on here? Uh, we kind of talked about the rebrand of Edge, how it's very different, very kind of like fam- uh, the House of Black type of family, new brood, whatever they want to call it. You know, it's a different type of Edge, so it makes sense to give him a faction. Damian Priest, I think, is a good person to put with him. 
just because of how they've kind of used him. Um, definitely would like some more additions, though, please. And soon. Mansoor? You want Mansoor in this? That's no. interesting. Um, yeah, I think Priest's new look looks a lot cooler than his old look also. Having yeah, the hair like, back like the, and like, the stubble. The stubble. Uh, it just, like just kind of it yeah. just kind of fits it a little bit better. I think he the stubble adds a lot of dimension to his face. He should never be clean shaven. I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, I would like. To, I mean, I saw a graphic made up online of like Rhea and Liv and Finn Balor being added. I think that would be that would fantastic. be so good. Um, Champ, I would. I think if earlier. you do if you do Rhea and Liv and you do Edge and Priest and you just run them for that's it's a good so point. it's so easy to do that and you could just do. Rhea and Liv constantly trying to like outdo each other where Rhea just continuously does and then eventually you have Liv eventually go over her and Priest eventually go over Edge after they do their whole thing yeah no I think that's great too um all right and lastly the biggest Wrestlemania match of all time the most stupendous baby um Roman versus Brock winner take all and obviously as we said Roman won and he is holding both belts at the moment until they combine them. Um, but now Roman won in probably one of the longest Brock matches. I would say that went a good like 15 minutes ish. Yeah. And it was probably cut short if uh, people are speculating the injury that the official Roman. time on Wikipedia has 12 minutes, 15 seconds. That's pretty long for Brock. It was usually a five minute. Split. Yeah. Um, but yeah, apparently Roman got hurt while he was in the Kimura lock there. Um, not really sure what to do. As long as I know, as he, I know he couldn't lift the belt at first, but then he struggled, like kind of like he how literally, I think, popped his arm back in. As oh. long as he doesn't need like legitimate surgery for like any cartilage or ligament damage, if he's just kind of in a sling for a while, that can they can hold him over just doing promos they, till they can make Cody get in the belt a lot easier then. <laughs> yes, um, they could. But um, no, um. That was great. I, I thought the match was great. It was one of Brock's best matches, yeah. I would say. I really liked it. Um, and then the moment's cool, of course, of Roman holding up both titles to end the show. I mean, no Dwayne, this is fine. But this mania has a lot of iconic images, honestly, coming out of it. Similar to 35 in a way, it reminds yes. me of, too, with like Kofi and Becky and Thugonomic Cena and, you know, Seth winning the title from Brock at the beginning, like similar, but it's a it's a very but, memorable but mania. That. Yeah, but above that, I would say it is a memorable. Oh, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're not going to touch on Raw after WrestleMania. They did some nonsense because we don't have much time. Veer left. finally showed up. Veer showed up, and Elias's brother Ezekiel showed up. So stupid. I am Elias WWE. Hey, this is <laughs> Elias's little brother Ezekiel. So bad. It's so. Bad. I'm gonna be using this now. Ugly boy without his beard too. Man, I feel bad for him. He should have given all of his beard to Damian Priest. <laughs> That'd be kind of sick. Um, but yeah, Veer showed up, and nothing else of good happened except for Cody crying during his promo, which was nice about his dad. Um, yeah, and how he wants to win the title. Otherwise, nothing else crazy happened on the Raw After Mania, which is disappointing. Um, but any final thoughts to wrap up before I close it out? Uh, it was probably one of the most fun weekends of wrestling in a long time. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, they probably did it because of the whole pandemic, too, thinking back now of how we were stuck watching Thunderdome crap. Um, so thank you for a fun weekend, Vince. And with that being said, that does it for this Vince. episode of the Sports Department Podcast. Uh, you can watch and listen on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. Follow the social medias on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Sports Death Pod. That's Sports D-E-P-T Pod. Um, the mock draft should be out or it's coming out soon. It'll be out after this one. It's recorded. So Yeah, it's in the can. Same thing with the baseball one. So it's those will be can, out soon. Like Justin's dumps. Indeed. Um, yeah, the baseball, the baseball one. Forgot about that. Um, yeah, yeah, we did that last week. Yeah. Um, Basketball playoffs, man. That's next. Once Let's playoffs play. start, play ins April 12th through the 15th. Oof, big time. Can't for wait. Jersey. Yep. Cheers. Uh, I'll be sitting at the number one seed, scouting the play in very well. I hope we get you guys. Oh, I really do. Well, I mean, you guys are the only ones we can get, I think. Yeah. We're, we're at the 9 10. So, yeah. Yep. yeah. We're but done. These are us or nothing, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's it. No football. We said draft. That's it. Stay tuned to all that fun stuff and we'll see you in the next episode.